Hey, John here. Let's talk about something called Care Path and Path Box that we can use to figure out how big something is when it will be drawn in PostScript. So let's get this program real quick. Font height, I got defined 120 points. Here's our favorite fiducial procedure that we got in the earlier videos. I drew a box routine here that takes the lower left and the upper right coordinates and draws a rectangular box and consumes it, leaves nothing on the stack when that's done. This is done in, in what should be relatively obvious. Uh, if you get the lower left and the upper right, you have to construct the the lower right and the upper left, given those are the coordinates. And the, if you know what the lower left X and Y are, this one over here would be the same um, Y as there is over here, but the same X as there would be in the upper right. So I use index and roll to get uh, things out unraveled into four coordinates so that I've got the lower left, lower right, upper right, and upper left sitting on the stack in this order right here. I then create a path. I move to the first thing on the path, which turns out is the upper left, and I'm gonna draw it around here in the opposite order and then close the path, and I'm gonna just draw a box at that time using the current line width and color and so on. That's what this guy does here. And I'm going to use that to show what's happening here in order to demonstrate how care path, flat path, and path box work. All right, so let's first look and see what's going on here. I got a string, and I've got an X and Y coordinate where I want to print that string. I'm going to create a path. I'm going to replicate the starting coordinates so that I can move there. And what do I do? I got a roll here, so I put the uh, the string. I change the string to the end. Okay, so I'm at the point. I'm at the position, I should say, where I want the string to be printed. I could just call show at this point if I wanted to, and I have a copy of the starting point sitting in the stack below the string I want to print. Okay, I pick a font and scale it. Now these are some debug routines right here that we can use to see what's going on before we see the bigger picture. This over here is the bigger picture, by the way. So the code down here is going to print the string, just like you saw. If I just said show right there, there it is. I'm going to put a box around it, and I'm going to put some fiducials showing me the position where the string was uh, shown and a measure of the uh, baseline, the line height, okay? But before I do that, Let's look at something right here. Let's let's focus on what this does here, the care path operator, okay? So the care path, remember we have a path that we just created and we move to the starting location where we want to say show for the string, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to set a line width. We're going to replicate the string. And then we're going to use care path. Now, care path does a couple of things for some fancy situations. The false on the left here says, look, I want you to create a path that I can use for a stroke operation. All right. If you put true over here, it's being created for other things like clipping regions and things like that. Go ahead and look at the language reference manual, the red book, to find out more details of what you would do with other modes of care path. But right now, this is the, the standard way to use this thing. If I want to create a, a, a path, I want to take the string and I want to generate a path and append it to the current path that draws the outline of all the letters in this string. Okay. So we can open this up in GV. All right. Events won't do this. It'll get upset because the um, the the code here is not valid below the show page right here. This stuff down here now won't work. That's why this was commented out. So if you want to play around with this, keep that in mind. Anyway, I all I did here is I I wanted to show you what it means for the what the care path does. Right. So it appends to the current path those lines needed you know curves and things like that needed to draw this string okay it doesn't actually draw 
the glyphs, the character glyphs, it draws the outlines only of the glyphs. So, and because that's a regular old path, we can do all kinds of things. Like we can make the line width wider now, okay? And then this guy, you have to go in here or something. Where is it? Watch the file in order to redraw itself. There you go. So you can change the path. You can use dash patterns and things like that. I haven't talked about those yet. But when drawing, you know, uh, lines, there's all, all kinds of other options and colors and things that you already know about that we can use to mess around. So anyway, the point is when care path is done, it, 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 it will have appended all these drawings, all these line move to line to and stuff like that into the current path so that I could, if I wanted to say stroke or whatever I wanted to do with that path as I so desire. All right. So, what do we want to do? All right, so how does this thing work? First things first, we're going to duplicate the string again, just like we did up here, okay? So remember, I got the X and Y starting location, and I got a string on the stack, and I, the current position, the current point is the X and Y position, all right? So if I duplicate the top of the stack, it gives me an extra string. I do the same thing I just did a second ago to create the character path, the outlines. Now I'm going to call something called flatten path, now, again, if you look it up in the, in, the, in the red book, you'll see that before you call this path box down here, you want to call flatten path. What happens is, remember when we did the arc two, or even the arc, there are these, con what we call control points. There are points involved in the path that are not themselves on the path. You know, when you say arc two, the last uh, coordinate you give it is the, coordinate that you want to aim at when you come out of the arc you don't necessarily draw the the path to that target point it only exists to let you know how far around the curve to go well the point the the point all right of this digression is that those control points can confuse path box all right in flatten path can be used to remove all those control points from the current path that has been created by this guy here. All right. And what it really does is it says it takes all the arcs and turns them into a huge number of really short little straight lines. All right. Now, when path box is called, what this thing does is it says take every one of the endpoints of all the lines and figure out the smallest rectangular box that can contain all those points and give me the lower left and upper right coordinates of that box. Now, you know, I, I wrote the box routine to take this, okay? So the care path is drawn. You just saw what it looks like in the debug code. If we comment that debug out again, we can then take a look at the final version here. So what happens is, path box give me the lower left and the upper right i'm going to create a uh, set of color to light blue i'm going to make a five point wide line width and i'm going to uh, call my box routine right and it's going to eat this off the stack leaving us with this stuff down here all right so i'm drawing this blue box so there's the lower left and the upper right this fiducial here this blue one is written right down here okay and that fiducial is drawn at the same xy coordinate that we had when we called care path, all right? That is the point where we're gonna later on call show and draw this string. So this is the position where the string will be printed. This is the position where the care path was called to draw the outlines of all the text glyphs, all right, all the character glyphs. So that's what this is there for. And you'll notice that the box that encompasses all the text that we figured out from path box over there doesn't even touch that point, all right? So this is one of the, the pleasantries of dealing with, 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 with fonts, right? The design height, we'll see the red one down here, the red fiducial, which is drawn right here. And the dehumidifier kicks in once again to spoil my audio in one of my videos. But that's okay. We'll get over it. Okay, so the the, um, the box is drawn here. 
This is the blue fiducial, which is drawn at the XY coordinates where we're going to put the string. We make another copy of the XY coordinates. We make a red color and we move up in Y by font height, right? Because we get the XY coordinates here and we add font height to the Y coordinate. And then we put a fiducial there, which eats the top X and Y coordinates. We can then call move to with black and show the string okay so what do we got here this is the point where we draw the text this is the design height of the font and the blue box represents the outer dimensions of where all the text really went all the, the character lists really went. so you can see the descenders do descend below the starting point nothing really reaches all the way up to the height of the font that I asked for in the first place and nothing even prints at the actual starting location so it moves in a little bit to the right it starts drawing these characters and they go all over the place now the reason I talk about all this is if you really want to know exactly where your text is printed when it's on the page you can use the care path to figure that out along with path box and other such things so if we want to revisit now the score reels and the numbers and get rid of my you know hacking and guessing and just tinkering to try and figure out how to get the text aligned centered on those real facets i can use this box technique to figure out where the text really goes when i ask it to print it here for example right so in that case let me make a copy of this line of code up here that is the Oops, starting location and the text to print. Comment the other one out and just sit here and change it to have a single digit in there. The number one. Right? Now I can figure out how wide it really is and how high it really is relative to any point that I might ask it to be drawn. All right? And, of course, all fonts, uh, well, not all of them, this font happens to be kerned, so if I were to print something like a lowercase i, it would be skinnier. In fact, it even <laughs> further to the left than a 1, or say a capital W might be really wide, right? Look at that, and the W even starts exactly, well, not maybe not quite perfectly exactly. It looks pretty darn close. It's still a little bit off-center right there. You can see it's fiducial is a little to the left of the center of this outer line here. Sometimes there's a capital M is supposed to be the widest thing. Uh, maybe a lowercase l is even thinner than the I, right? Look at that. Okay, so you can use this to figure out the dimensions of individual characters if you really want to. And then you can do math on them in order to get them centered, vertically, horizontally, or whatever. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.